Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be back with today's guest, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors that make this possible. As always, we want to thank Violet Defense for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Go to violetdefense.com for more information. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. If you're ready to implement some of their existing products, or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Once again, go to violetdefense.com for more information about this great product. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive. Uh, we have a Sideline interact, Interactive video score table in our gym, and it is fantastic. We use it for home games, for volleyball and basketball. We also use it during pep rallies, and we use it for signing ceremonies. It's a tremendously versatile tool, and you really need to check it out. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while also creating excitement in your gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Check them out. I promise you won't be disappointed. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They provide a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. The FIAAA has a sideline interactive video console for our Hall of Fame, and it's really cool. You really need to check them out. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank our friends at Huddle. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. More than 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, are using Huddle to elevate the performance of their athletes and their teams using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play. If you're a club or a youth coach, Huddle can help you. High schools and colleges have been using Huddle for years, and even professional teams use Huddle to improve the performance of their teams. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches at the college and university teams that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, Go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to thank the good people at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives you access to the 95% of the players and the parents who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials. 
and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466, or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to check the pulse of your players and your parents, you're really missing out. Go to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. And we also want to thank Athletic Surveys for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of the podcast. That's Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. And we want to thank Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can learn more about their great products at hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. Very excited about today's guest. And for our listeners, we're recording this on December 22nd. So it's going to be very timely by the time you listen to it. Uh, our guest today is Megan O'Leary. Uh, Megan, among other things, is a two-time Olympian. Uh, she worked for ESPN for a number of years. She's an entrepreneur, a, a tech expert, and her latest venture, she's the head of operations and growth for a company called Stride, a very cool company. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But uh, Megan, welcome to the podcast. Jake, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I uh, appreciate you, um, you know, connecting um, and uh, very excited about, uh, you know, what might lay down the road. But let's go and get started. Uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you grew up, where you went to school and college, uh, obviously your athletic path and um, kind of how that path has led you to this point uh, in your career now with a, a new venture. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, I am a forever athlete, I like to say, as, as most of us are lifetime athletes. I grew up kind of all over. I moved around a lot um, in the South and Midwest, mostly Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, and then majority of my youth um, in high school spent in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and I grew up in sports. I have a twin brother and an older brother. Uh, both my parents were athletes. My, you know, my, my dad played D1 basketball at University of Tulsa. He was drafted by the Pistons, but had already proposed to my mom. So didn't want to go into the NBA at the time. <laughs> the NBA was very different back then. Um, you know, and, and I was, I was a fortunate sort of that, that second generation title nine baby. I, I played all the sports that I could, you know, I played a lot with boys, but that, you know, that pathway afforded me a lot of opportunity later. I was a, you know, three sport athlete in, or in high school. And then that led me into a, being a two sport athlete in college, uh, where I attended the university of Virginia, got, you know, go Wahoos, <laughs> got two degrees there playing softball and volleyball. And then, you know, that, that sort of catapulted me into a career with ESPN. As you said, that was my, my first job out of college. I started in production as a PA and then moved into programming, which is sort of the business side, scheduling acquisitions. Um, I worked in college sports primarily and, and had a blast. I got to go, you know, to events and do all the championships. And it was, it was very much my, you know, kind of my environment. Um, while I was working for ESPN, I Googled rowing and that, sort of opened up a, an entirely different journey um, that was very unexpected. I showed up, you know, having never picked up an oar to a learn to row lesson. This was, gosh, this was 11 years ago now, summer of 2010. And, you know, absolutely fell in love with it. And luckily had people around me that said, hey, you, you know, you have a lot of potential. You could be good at this. And so one thing led to another a year later, I was invited into the National Team Training Center in Princeton, New Jersey. You know, another few months later, I made the 2012 Olympic um, team training group, selection group, um, narrowly missed the team then, um, having just come into the sport. But really, the goal was Rio. Uh, made my first national team in 2013. And then thereafter, um, yeah, I've won a couple of world championship medals, World Cup medals along the way, and attended both the, right, the Rio and the Tokyo Games. Newly retired um, from my professional athletic career. Uh, just this, you know, coming back from Tokyo in August. Um, in parallel, as you mentioned, I've I've been, you know, had to leave ESPN to fully focus on the Olympics eventually, and then that opened up the opportunity to explore my entrepreneurial interests and helped co-found a software B two B company in twenty gosh twenty fourteen. 2015 
and then um, you know exited left them at the earlier this year and meanwhile have been helping other startups grow and that's what's brought me to stride um, which is a lovely mixture of my athletic experience and background uh, with tech i'm i'm just you know following along here you know for a sports uh geek i think we probably both fall into that category you know division one athlete um you know espn oh by the way you know i i made the olympics twice uh you know what what a very cool i think uh, every listener is uh, green with envy now uh very very cool um let's talk a little bit about that olympic experience you know you were a d1 athlete in two sports volleyball and softball so obviously you know you 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 had you know some athletic abilities um i've had a couple you know coaching small high schools i've had a couple over my year uh uh, career, a uh, couple of athletes that played football for me at the small high school level. They weren't big enough to play D1 football, but they ended up on the crew team, the rowing team at their university, and they just loved it. Um, what was, you know, what drew you to rowing? Why did you Google that, uh, you know, <laughs> all those years ago? Yeah, this is an important part of the story too. And, and you mentioning that, right, football players that end up on a, a big campus get sort of tapped on the shoulder and say, hey, you should come out for for rowing, you know, that happened to me. The, the head women's rowing coach at UVA, which is a national championship caliber program, very, very good, you know, tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, <laughs> you would be, you know, you'd be great in this sport. Have you, have you considered it? And I was like, well, like I'm kind of busy, like I'm already an athlete. And, and he knew that. Um, we had some coaching changes in the softball program. And he just said, hey, if you're not going to continue with softball, just give it a try. And he even said, he's like, you could be an Olympian one day. And when someone says that to you, you either, and I kind of laughed and I was like, you're crazy, but as an athlete, and that was a dream of mine, you kind of, you know, you hear it and it, it embeds itself in your brain. Right. And so that, that sort of followed me, you know, the seed was planted and, and I, you know, this was when I transitioned to, you know, being a professional in terms of a career professional with ESPN, I looked for outlets to entertain my, you know, athletic kind of love. Um, and, you know, I call it uh, beer pitch softball, but slow pitch softball was not doing it for me. It was fun. And so I got into CrossFit and that has the rowing machine and I was beaten up on the guys. And so, you know, I finally was like, I should just, let's see what this, this thing is like on the water for real. So that's what, that was the impetus for the, the Google search for sure. No, no, again, just uh, really cool. And congratulations on all that success. For listeners, we're visiting with Megan O'Leary. Uh, two-time Olympian, a successful entrepreneur, and now the head of operations and growth for a new company called Stride. We're going to find out a little bit more about that when we come back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Huddle for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. More than 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, are using Huddle to elevate the performance of their athletes and their teams using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. We've got a Huddle Focus in our gymnasium and it is terrific. Our volleyball and basketball coaches just love it. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play. If you're a club or a youth coach, Huddle can help you out. High schools and colleges have been using Huddle for years, and even professional teams are using Huddle to elevate the play of their teams. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches at the college and university level that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone, to our interview with Megan O'Leary. Uh, Megan, we always like to ask our guests about the people that have impacted their life and their career, those mentors. It's such an important part of athletics. Um, so who are some of the people that, the expression I like to use is, I still hear those voices in my head. So um, whose voice do you still hear that's helped you get where you are today? Oh, yeah, I, I always love this question. And 
you know, and for me, I like to think that I sort of have, I mean, using a softball analogy, I have like a softball team of mentors, you know, everyone's a position player, they bring a different set of experiences and, and sort of right advice or input that has impacted my life. I mean, you know, and of course, my parents, I mentioned them earlier, um, being athletes, uh, being, you know, in business and, and really kind of just tough, um, tough Scottish Irish people. And so I, I think I learned a lot how to be tough and how to work hard from them. And, and obviously that translates to, to sports, right? You, you got to be able to put in the work and you have to understand that hard work um, is, a, is a, it's a function and it's a formula that, that leads, that can lead to success. Obviously there's, there's other things in there, you know, beyond that, I, I've been lucky to have, you know, the, the, the sports spaces, we're, we're kind of going through a really great change right now where women's voices and women in, you know, in higher roles are, are being, it's just, it's becoming more it's normalized. Um, but as even as a young person, that that wasn't the case. I mean, the WNBA, WNBA just started when I was uh, still a kid. But, you know, I had an athletic director and she was my softball coach in high school, uh, my romancer. And she's, you know, I, I've always said she's like a second mom to me. Um, but she, you know, she helped create a softball program at my high school because she saw talent in me and then has just been someone that has stayed in my life and often that voice, right, <laughs> that comes up, you know, and then, I mean, into college, Jane Miller was our SWA at UVA and she was just a, a cornerstone fixture of athletics um, at UVA and, and sort of, you know, knew everyone's names and, and really for me, I you know, emulated some of that, you know, she was tough but she was empathetic. You know, she, she harnessed compassionate, you know, kind of that leadership aspect. And I, through her was able to see, you know, kind of how to be a strong woman um, in a leadership position, you know, and then beyond that, like, uh, again, like going into my professional career at ESPN, I had some really cool people that I was lucky enough to work with. Carol Stiff is a, you know, she can be thanked for bringing women's basketball into the limelight um, on, on TV. She was a trailblazer. Meg Aronowitz is a, is a big time, you know, I think she's a coordinating producer, just big time at ESPN now. And I, I really served under her tutelage for a long time and she took me under a wing and I, I got to see a lot about TV and, and we, you know, working with her helped, you know, the women's college world series is a big deal now, right? Softball mm -hmm. is huge called softball. And she's a big part of that. Beth Moens, I got to work with Beth Moens and she's, you know, she's one of the, the voices of sports and not just women's sports. And so I've got to, to, I've been really lucky, I think, to, to work with um, some really strong women leaders um, that have, you know, continued to sort of shape um, shape who I want to be, not only as an athlete, but as a professional and, and the impact I want to make in those roles. And there's many, many more, <laughs> um, but these are, these are some of the names when I think back, um, um, you know, that I've been lucky enough to, to have worked with or that have helped shaped who I've become. Oh, well, I really appreciate you sharing. Yeah, I can tell there's a lot of love there. Um, you know, you and I talked a little bit, you know, you're, you know, athlete, you know, Olympian, you know, ESPN, all that stuff, you know, the, I've, I've interviewed, you know, quite a few people and the, the successful ones, there's always that drive, you know, there's, you know, hey, what's the next challenge? And now, uh, you know, you've taken on a new, a new challenge here with Stride. And I was, as you were explaining it to me, I was just so very intrigued. Um, let our listeners know a little bit about what Stride is, and then we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll do a deeper dive into all the different things that Stride can do. But, uh, you know, what is Stride? Yeah. So Stride is Stride is a really cool solution. I, you know, I was lucky enough to be introduced to, to help. Um, they were, they've been around for a couple of years, building the product, really nailing, you know, that product market fit, the messaging, making sure it, it did what they wanted it to do um, for the users. And the key users are athletic directors, coaches, and athletes. And what it does is really focus and, and dive deep into that coach athlete interaction, you know, call it a coach athlete relationship management platform essentially. So what that means is that, you know, it's, it's applying technology to solve for a lot of the, the, the problems, right. That, you know, I hear from my ADs and coaches is there's not enough time. I want to give more feedback to my athletes. I want them to, I want to know that they're hearing what I say or seeing what I send them all these things in terms of all the different tools that are out there. It's, it's really trying to, to centralize a lot of that and almost be a clearinghouse for the data, but to, to really bring the coach and athlete closer and to empower the AD to have a lot more 
oversight um, and to save them time, right? And so I'm a big fan of, of how tech can solve problems, but it's it's got to truly solve problems. So I've been excited to, to partner and work with them to, to, to do this. So I'm excited to talk more about it. Yeah, the, the more I heard about it, the more I could see it being applied, uh, you know, in an athletic director, coach, athlete setting. So Again, for listeners, we're visiting with Megan O'Leary. Um, she's going to come back. And uh, as I said, we're going to take a little bit deeper dive into what Stride can do for you and your program. Uh, please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. You know, we have a Sideline Interactive video score table in our gym, and it is fantastic. Of course, we use it for volleyball and basketball games, but we use it for pep rallies. We use it for signing ceremonies. It's a tremendously versatile tool, and you really should check them out. It's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every season also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. You really need to check these folks out. Hey, we're back with Megan O'Leary, the head of operations and growth for Stride. Megan, um, I want to take a deep dive into this program. You know, most of our listeners are ADs. Uh, we've got some coaches there, but I want them to have a, a good understanding of you know what Stride is and what it can do for them. So uh, I'm going to let you kind of take over as the co-host right now. Perfect. No, thanks, Jake. Yeah, Stride. Stride is exciting to me. You know, I, I I'm always I'm always I've always been a problem solver. I think that's what's led me onto an entrepreneurial path. Um, and for me. You know, what, what most excites me about Stride is that it's, it's tackling a lot of the problems or challenges that we heard from ADs and coaches um, about, you know, dealing with not only data management, but all the communication and how to, you know, how to really engage and empower athletes in a much more just effective way. And so, you know, what Stride does, especially for the AD, is it creates, it creates a, <laughs> a place where they can house everything. I mean, in that, when I say everything, it's, it's not only rosters and staff management, but it's really, instead of having to chase down coaches for coaching reports, athlete attendance, um, feedback, it, it provides a, you know, a virtual solution to where they can sit down on their desktop or in their, you know, in a mobile app glean and gather that information much more quickly, um, but also archive it in a really organized way. Um, you know, we heard, we heard from ADs, you know, nine out of 10 still use some form of pen and paper, Google Drive, Microsoft Word, Excel, right, to manage a lot of this data. And while that, that works, it, it wasn't built for athletic programs. So what we've done is, is try and build it for athletic programs. And when you dive deeper into that coach athlete interaction, you know, one thing we heard from coaches, especially was that same issue of data management, but for them, it was, it was a lot about, you know, I want to, I want to empower and engage my athletes in a more effective way. I want them to show up to practice prepared. I want to be able to give them feedback that they remember consistently and continuously and, and what the solution does is it provides not only for coaches to build practice plans, schedule their practices, share that with athletes. So athletes can see what we're doing today, next week, show up prepared, but then that coach can, you know, provide feedback for that athlete in the solution. And that athlete has access to that feedback, not only practice to practice, but, you know, Hey, I know for me, I had coaches tell me just amazing things, but Young people, sometimes we're, you know, short-term memory, right? We want to see 30-second videos. We want to, you know, we want to move on to the next thing. But if I can go back and say, ah, last week, you know, Coach Smith said this great thing, and I can go into my app and see what Coach said, read that before today's practice, I'll probably show up a little bit more prepared. And I'll also show up a little bit more engaged in my own process. And so, you know, this app is managing all of those things, but really what is, you know, it's trying to do is, is drive a culture of success by 
connecting people consistently and continuously um, throughout the whole process of whether that's, you know, a season year over year, you know, data capture year over year is so important for, you know, that freshman to senior journey, right. For high, you know, high school athletes change significantly, but if they have sort of a virtual training journal, um, imagine the, you know, the growth and the, the progress will only be accelerated. And then same thing for ADs to be able to, you know, zoom out and sort of see the progress throughout a season um, and not just assess at the end of the season. <laughs> Imagine, you know, again, the impact that having a little bit more consistent, better captured, you know, I keep saying data, but really it's, you know, it's feedback. It's, it's what, you know, what coaches are saying about their athletes, what athletes are saying about their experience as well. Um, it's going to help those ADs do their job, hopefully a, a lot better, but a lot easier because, you know, ADs are strapped. <laughs> we know that they're resource constrained, they're busy, um, and they're, you know, they, they're looking for ways to, to obviously we're, you know, they're, they're high, high achieving individuals. So they're always looking for ways to improve, um, but also, you know, to, to save a little time because we know from all of our research and experience that they're very, very busy. So this is meant to also be a time saver, but just to, to create a better experience for all the people involved as well. So that's what excites me about Stride. You can tell I, I start talking about it, but it's pretty cool. We've done a ton of testing. We have a lot of you know, trial customers that have informed the product. Um, it, it's meant to be a product built by coaches and athletes, right? We were all coaches and athletes, and now it's for coaches and athletes. No, absolutely. As you explained it to me the other day, uh, you know, before the interview and even now during the interview, you know, it just seemed to, you know, the, I could feel the light bulb coming on in my head as that, you know, old, you know, now retired, you know, uh, football and track coach, uh, how, you know, this would be uh, very easy to use with today's generation of kids. Uh, obviously, you know, something like this wasn't around a uh, hundred years ago when I was in high school or college. <laughs> But, uh, you know, our, our kids are online, our kids are using apps. I mean, it's how they communicate. And it just seems like, you know, that next natural step. Um, have you seen some really, let, let's say some unexpected ways it has been used in the short while that, you know, it, it's been out and been available? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So one of the cool features, well, two of the cool features we have are goal setting for athletes to set short and long-term goals, but then also this voluntary workout feature. So a lot of, even with specialization, a lot of athletes are either, you know, they're still multi-sport athletes or they're doing extra work. And to better inform coaches and ADs of that work only, you know, basically better prepares them for what to expect, right? And so the, the athletes can capture their voluntary workouts in their app, say, you know, I ran, over the holidays, right? A lot of these athletes, if they don't have organized practices, they may still have training goals or, or they're being asked of you know, their coaches to do some work. They can capture that in an app, share that with the coaches. So their coaches know what their athletes are doing. So it's, it's not only, it's providing a communication channel, but it's, it's really providing a sense of accountability so that you know, the coaches understand you know, what the athletes are doing. Um, and the athletes we've, we've also interviewed tons of athletes. They, they love this because they can also, they are category, you know, they're categorizing their work. They're, they're getting to go back in and, and see the rewards of their work. And, and hopefully, you know, maybe that's translating to better performance, you know, work equals performance. Um, and then the feedback from the coaches, the coaches are able to help, you know, catch things before they become a problem. Right. And so, if, you know, there's trends when there's more consistent flow of communication that are established so that, hey, if they see their athletes either falling behind or doing too much work, they can say, hey, you know, relax and we need you to recover or, hey, you have this goal, you know, for me rowing the big tests we have are the, what's your 2K time? What's your 2000 meter time? And if I set a goal that's, that's a very aspirational, very fast goal. My coach knows that that's my goal and they can help me, right? Get to that place where, Hey, if this is your goal, let's, let's talk about the steps to get there. So just creating a way for, you know, the, the cool thing has been the athletes really harnessing and grabbing hold of the power of capturing their work, seeing their work, and then they're involving their coach in those goals. You know, it's not just about showing up to practice. It's the intention and thought you put into it as well. Uh, very cool. I love the uh, idea of the athlete coach collaboration and just some independent thinking 
um, you know, on the athlete's part. Very cool stuff. We're going to do this at the end of the interview, but Megan, if one of our listeners wants to reach out and uh, find out more about Stride or even, you know, reach out to you and pick your brain a little bit, what's the best way that they can get in touch? Yeah. So my email is Megan at mystrideapp.com and that's Megan with an H. So M E G H A N. And then mystrideapp.com is how it sounds. All right. Very cool. We're going to be back with some more with our guest, Megan O'Leary, but uh, let's take another quick break and recognize our podcast sponsors. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank the good folks at Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They provide a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back to our interview with Megan O'Leary, uh, two-time Olympian, uh, ESPN veteran, and now the head of operations and growth at Stride. Megan, uh, this is the point in the podcast where, you know, we ask, uh, you know, kind of a, a coaching question. And uh, back in my day, don't you love it when coaches uh, say that? Um, it was very common to hear the phrase, you know, come on, you know, Jake, you got to be tough. Come on, Jake, you got to suck it up. And uh, now, you know, I, I think we know better ways to do that. But my question for you, you know, you very successful division one athlete in two sports, uh, a two-time Olympian, how can an athletic director or a coach um, teach kids, coach kids to be tough while also being aware of and sensitive to the, the very real social emotional challenges that a Generation Z kid is experiencing? Uh, do you have any advice for us? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I could still, still listen to some of this advice as well. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 37. And I, I grew up in that era too, you know, rub some dirt on it. You're not bleeding. You're not hurt. Um, and I, you know, I, I grew up with brothers and so it was, it was, it was, it was rough, but it was it, what made me tough is what translated for me to, to believe that. And, you know, I do think the evolution of um, how we think about how to communicate, how to be tough is what has, has changed it. The, what, what it takes to be tough hasn't. And that's, I think the important key is that, you know, you still have to work hard. You still have to be um, willing to, to push yourself to a place where you're going to experience some discomfort. And that applies what I've learned too outside of sport, you know, that applies to non-physical discomfort in the sense of, you know, when you're, when you're taking risks professionally in your career and you know, going for that new job, like you're going to be uncomfortable just as when you're running lines and sprinting and, you know, your body starts, the lactic acid starts to build up, like that is uncomfortable, but you are uncovering new levels of progress. And I, I use that example because I think that that's what's often required now is to communicate what it takes, not just to say, this is what it takes in terms of, well, you know, it, it takes this to, you know, you just got to be tough rather. Hey, like being tough means it's going to hurt a little bit, you know, and, and really communicating and, and clearly um, making it um, understanding um, what the, the difference between um, bad pain, like really, really bad pain and okay pain is. And that just takes more communication. I think, you know, for, for, for me, I chose a sport that, that puts you in a lot of pain, right? So my, my tolerance for pain is quite high. Um, but I, you know, even, even on the Olympic team, we had different generations of, of athletes. And so as athlete to athlete, we had to communicate to each other differently. Cause I know, I mean, I, I would want to just tell an athlete to suck it up. That was younger than me <laughs> um, because that's what I was used to hearing. But then you do have to pause and say, well, what am I actually trying to say? Instead, it's about setting those expectations saying, I need you to show up today because I know that if you show up, you're going to make me better. I'm going to make you better. And we're going to be able to achieve this thing. 
And I, you know, it's just those extra steps that I think that coaches and ADs are now having to steps in communication is what I mean by that. Now having to pause and say, what kind of language can I use to convey? It's really the same message, but I have to say it a little bit differently. Right. Um, but I'm still learning, you know, I, I still, I think this is a, this is why it's an important topic is because, you know, it is people are wanting to be better. Um, and that means I think we have to be patient on both sides as well um, because we're all human. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think it just, it, it takes that little bit of extra thought as to, okay, I know what I'm trying to say. How can I say it in a way um, that is, you know, whether it's less harsh, but it, it creates the same message, right? Um, and I know, you know, that's, that's tough. That's, that's tough. But I think it, it takes, again, it just takes some, some more thought, really. No, I, I think you hit it on the head, you know, just that communication, um, you know, the, this is what I mean, this is how, you know, we're going to get there, uh, maybe sharing, I know it's tough, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, well, and that's that empathy, right? Like, I know this mm -hmm. is tough, like, this is supposed to be hard, like, mm -hmm. instead of maybe just that, for athletes, sometimes, you know, just that comfort of like, oh, this is supposed to be hard, but I'm, you know, my coach is here with me in that, that difficult, you know, that pain or that challenge or whatever it is. That's exactly, you know, the empathy part of it. And, and, and I think what you just mentioned is, is sometimes that missing component from, let's say the parent uh, perspective, it's supposed to be tough. Um, you know, it, it's not supposed to be awful, uh, but it's <laughs> supposed to be tough. It's all part of the experience. Uh, very cool stuff. Megan, this has been really, really neat, um, you know, get to know you just a little bit and uh, finding out more about Stride, but we're not done yet. Uh, we always like to wrap up with what we call the Athletic Director's Toolbox, which is sponsored by Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. So in just a minute, uh, we're going to ask you what you would put into the toolbox of a brand new Athletic Director, uh, but first we're going to take a quick message and hear from uh, Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Uh, for listeners, please stay with us. Okay. We really want to say thank you to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the AD's Toolbox segment of the podcast. You know, Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also allows you to tap into the usually 95% of the players and the parents who really love your program, and it gives them a voice to help you demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for your players and parents. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials, and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466. Or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your players, you're really missing out on a great opportunity. Let the professionals at athleticsurveys.com help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone. We've been visiting with Megan O'Leary, two time Olympian. Uh, ESPN veteran, entrepreneur, and currently the head of operations and growth for Stride. Uh, Megan, as I mentioned, this has been really cool um, hearing about your story and, uh, and about Stride, but right now I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but uh, I'm challenging you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job, but I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox, what three items are going to go in Megan O'Leary's athletic director toolbox? Oh, this is a fun question. Yeah. So these are, some of these are the intangibles, but, um, you know, an athletic director is a leader. They're the equivalent of a CEO. They're equivalent of a, you know, sort of that chief of staff too. you know, a very a leadership position. And I, I think the, the toughest thing often for leaders and especially for an AD in, you know, building out their team is to hire great people. And that means they need to surround themselves with a team that can win. Right. And, you know, mo most ADs um, have come up through athletics in some way. Right. And so they understand the importance of teamwork. 
And that means you got to have, you know, you got to have either a great position player or you got to have an awesome assistant coach, an offensive director. You, you have to have good people to do the job. And that means your job as well. You can't do it by yourself. And so I think that ability to hire really good people and to bring people with you is, is often overlooked because it's, it's really tough. I've learned that in the startup world as you're building teams from early on um, scaling is that, you know, it's hard to find and good people, but it means you have to spend the right time on it. And so I would, you know, that would be my number one thing too with ADs is not number one, let's, let's out of order, but one of the top three. Yeah, and so that would be, you know, one of my big things is, is for an AD to, to really give thought and to equip them with the You know, and that, that second one, uh, and this is a little bit symbolic, would be a walkie-talkie. And the reason for that is it's a two-way channel mechanism. Communication, as we already spoke about earlier, is, is so, so important. Um, for every role, coaches, ADs, but especially the AD. And as a new AD, AD you know, you, you need to come in and be willing not only to have that, you know, ability to meaningfully, consistently, effectively communicate, but you have to listen. So walkie-talkie is a two-way channel and you have to be willing to, you know, listen. And the reason for that is to learn and listening is, you know, listening to learn is listening to lead. And that means listening with empathy, compassion, this is how you build relationships and trust with, you know, your staff and the athletes. And, and so that, that walkie talkie is sort of the, the symbolism for that ability, not only to effectively communicate, but you have to be willing to listen as part of that. And then I think that that third thing, um, you know, I, I would put a, a block of con concrete a block of stone. And the reason for that is it's symbolic is that build a strong foundation. And that means that, you know, as an AD, you are in charge of the organization's processes. Um, the attention to detail is very, very important. I think when having to manage, you know, you go from maybe you were a coach, you were just managing one set of athletes um, to, you know, if you're an assistant AD and now the AD, you're managing a lot more. And so you have to have a strong foundation to build something big. And most ADs, they want to build something big and great. You know, again, we all were high achievers. And so, you know, that, that ability to, you know, and this is partly, this is, this is my area. Like I love operational process because it, when it's effective, it's, it's, you know, for me and for rowing, it's like finding your flow, right? It's the sound of a swish through a basket. Um, it's, it can really help a, a, you know, program not only grow, but just run that much more smoothly, keep everyone informed. And so, you know, that's a less savvy, less sexy one. But for, for me, that's the reason that stride is meaningful is that it's, it's meant to, to help, um, you know, it's meant to help organizations build a strong foundation, both in process, that attention to detail, making sure that people can, you know, scale out into this big, beautiful thing. You know, and that's, that's why I like stride is that it, it helps ADs, coaches, you know, it helps all of the people involved to, to really build something powerful. And that requires a strong foundation from, you know, all the organizational processes to all the details that go into program management and communication and making sure nothing falls through the cracks. So, you know, that, that block of concrete or piece of foundation is, is meant to symbolize that you, you know, you have to prioritize building from the ground up because things get really shaky at the top if you don't have a strong foundation. And, and, you know, that requires, again, that, you know, a little bit of intention and focus and making sure that, you know, you have the right, you have the right processes in place, you have the right workflows in place, you, you've taken, you know, taken the time to really build something that everyone can get on board and, and stand firmly on. Um, and I think that that's what we're doing with Stride and what we're seeing with the organizations that, that work with it. I'm a, I'm a process geek. I, I love good, you know, good operational process. It's, I think it's how I went from novice to Olympian. I had to break it down and, and really build a strong foundation to make sure that I could get to the peak. And I think that that applies to a bunch of things, but especially with the new AD coming in and, and wanting to, you know, wanting to build something solid. No, I, I, I love it. You know, uh, the, the, the big uh, block. Okay. Um, very <laughs> cool stuff. Um, we did this once, but I think we need to do it again. Uh, Megan, if one of our listeners wants to reach out, 
find out more about Stride and ADs, I certainly encourage you to do so. Uh, or if they just want to, you know, pick your brain a little bit, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I would love to hear from anyone. So my email is Megan at mystrideapp.com. It's Megan with an H. So M-E-G-H-A-N. My stride is M-Y-S-T-R-I-D-E app, app.com. And then I'm, I am a millennial still. So I'm on Instagram, Megan O'Leary one. <laughs> um, you can find me there and, and slide into my DMS. I'm, I'm happy to chat there as well. Um, so yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. I guess that's where the break ends. I'm obviously <laughs> not a millennial, so I'm still on Facebook. <laughs> Megan O'Leary, uh, Olympian, uh, entrepreneur and uh, stride. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks Jake. For listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of these interviews are being uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back again next time for another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing, the nation's leading provider of online ticketing for high schools and colleges. Find out more from the professionals at hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing.